Hello and welcome to Writing Your Reality. I'm Tracy Harding and today we are talking about getting into character. Now the first impression that readers get of a character, particularly a hero or a heroine, is all important as they drive the story and they motivate the reader to keep going. The quicker we get to know and love the hero or hate the villain, the better. So here are a few tips for getting into character and a list of questions that you can ask to get to know them better. For me, writing a book is much like producing a film. You choose your cast and then you, the writer, perform the function of the entire film crew. You do the camera work, the costuming and makeup, the set building and locations, the sound and special effects. People have said that when they read one of my stories, they feel like they are actually there and that they're just another character along for the ride. I find this amusing as that's exactly how I feel when I'm writing the tale. Like I am a cameraman on set, swinging around from incident to incident, following the flow of the action and dialogue. I'm simply recording what's taking place around me. My characters really write the tale all by themselves. I'm just an observer in their world and my characters are showing me the sights and introducing me to the relevant people in their lives. Characters can send your story off in all kinds of unexpected directions if you just give them a little scope and do not be so rigid about dictating what you think is going to happen. My characters are constantly surprising me with their responses, making me laugh, cry, gasp. If your characters don't do this, then your readers probably won't be charmed or surprised either. This is why it's important to take the time to get to know your characters, or you won't know a character's predictable response to a particular situation or comment, whether they will or won't like what's taking place and why. As the writer, you must form a good relationship with your characters and understand them and their intentions, be they good or evil. Then you can better disguise your observations in description and work plot information into the dialogue throughout the whole story and not just the beginning, as some character traits and flaws are going to take longer to become obvious. So before your readers meet with your character, you must first have a few meetings with the character yourself. You need to sit down and have a good chat. Ask your character questions, and if they don't answer, they're hiding something but at least you'll know what must be discovered later on in the tale. I spend a lot of time chatting with my characters. These conversations take place in my head mostly, sometimes out loud if I'm at home working alone. It's amazing what you can learn from your characters if you ask them the right questions. I will include a list of questions you can ask at the end of this tutorial. I like getting into the nitty gritty of why characters are the way they are. Sometimes I will assume the role of one character to speak with another. Obviously, if I'm playing a character that the one I'm questioning is disposed toward, I'm going to get more information out of the question session. Still, it is interesting to see how characters not well disposed towards each other react in conversation also. This is a great exercise for any writer, as it also aids with the flow of dialogue. For once you've had an interesting conversation between characters, then you just transpose that chat into dialogue in your story. Between my family, my friends, and the zooing characters I perfected during my teenage years of telling stories, I have a wide selection of characters to draw on from for my tales. And lending character traits from people you know can be very helpful for the author-character relationship too. My book Ghostwriting demonstrates how I do this, as I take the person the tale is dedicated to, give you a rundown on them, and then stick bits of their character into the heroine in my story. This was one of the main functions of the book, to give my readers an insight into my creative process. If you can't picture a character clearly in your mind, then pick an actor you feel looks like them and see that actor in the role. 
If you are a visual kind of person, watch the characters as they go about their business in your tale and note any peculiarities about how they walk, dress, act, hold themselves, as it all adds up to depth of character in the end. You need to learn or create the history of your characters, even if it doesn't arise in the story straight away, or even at all, as the past is going to affect their present mindset and motivations. If your imagination is not up to the challenge, then just study the people around you, the cause and effect in their lives and how their history has contributed to their personality. Their reactions to situations should become predictable to you. You won't like that, you'll find yourself saying. This is how well you must know your characters. If your hero or heroine is not your best buddy that you'd root for through thick and thin, then your readers are not going to be rooting for the character either. If your bad guy lacks motive, then no one's going to believe in their schemes. If you need help understanding or defining your character's personality, I'd recommend Awakening the Heroes Within by Carol S. Pearson, which lays out the 12 archetypes in detail. The healer, the warrior, the seeker, the sage, the destroyer, etc. And you'll find a link below this video to that book. Sometimes when a character presents to me, they will advise me of their name. Many of my more unusual names have come to me this way. Then I just have to figure out how to spell them. There are many excellent name generators online, or what you want to name the baby sites, that even divide names into different cultures, nationalities and eras. These can be very helpful if you're stuck for a name. I have a book called The Numerology of Names by Laura Lee Blythe, which divides names into 99 different personality types according to the numerology, which is particularly helpful for matching a character to a name that suits his or her personality, or to double check if the name you've already chosen suits. Uh, there's a link to that book below in this video. I find it very difficult to leave a story unfinished if I'm close to the characters. I feel like I owe them the courtesy of finishing their tale, being that they went to all the trouble of musing me in the first place. If you do not feel an allegiance to the people in the world you are writing about, then you don't know the locals anywhere near well enough. To discover the inner workings of their world you must get to know and love the residents who reside there. So as promised, here's a list of questions that you can ask yourself and ask your character to help define your characters better. But rather than having to stop and start this video so that you can copy the questions down, you will find them on a downloadable PDF on my Patreon page and I have made them public and free for everyone. So drop by there and pick up a copy. Now you may not get answers to all these questions straight away and they may not be relevant in the beginning of your tale but could crop up later. But when you do know more about your character, best not to present it in one big block dump of information in your story. Allow their personality and information to shine through in their dialogue and describe it during action. I'll give you an example of this in the PDF which you'll find on my Patreon page. I hope you found that information helpful. Do have a look down below because when I mention book 
links in videos I do try to find links to them for you if you use the links below that are affiliated then you're helping to keep this channel going if you would like a mentor session with me or you'd like to buy some of my books all those links are below also um, do come and join me next time where I'll be talking about how not to screw your back as a writer and that is really important especially if you're in it for the long haul believe you me and I've got quite a few tips for that after 25 years there were times that I couldn't sit down so yeah join me then thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time